located in. So if you're interested in learning more about Toledo or more about Fresno, more about Merced, Bakersfield, Oakland, there'll be space for you to actually hear from the folks that are there um, and uh, actual uh, city members as well. So there'll be some interesting dialogue and some facts about the actual projects of those locations. So hang out, hang on, and we'll go ahead and, uh, and get you over there as soon as possible. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get back a hold of Ruth and Jake and Irma um, shortly here just to kind of close out that conversation. But again, that I'm assuming is gonna be recorded. We'll be able to share that with y'all if you're missing this part of the convo, um, but there's plenty more to come for the day. And so just hang out with us. Um, I see more people are adding, super excited about that. So if you're just joining us, we announced that we will be officially coming to Toledo, Ohio. Um, that is gonna be our first city outside of California. We cannot wait. I mean, maybe we'll wait a little bit since it's 70 degrees in California and real snowy in Toledo. <laughs> but as soon as we, uh, we can physically be present there, we're very excited about it. Um, and we'll be answering some more questions throughout the day. Um, let's see here. And if one of the tech folks can give me a, I know we're coming up on time here for when those breakout sessions are supposed to start. So if we can just get a green light up or down of whether or not we're just gonna go ahead and do that. I know that we're not able to connect back with Irma, Jake and um, Ruth, but um, just wanna make sure we are, you know, staying on track here for the day. Doing my best y'all, doing my best. <laughs> Hi, Shan. Thank you so much for taking over. Uh, we are hearing from our tech right now, Talisha. She actually lost internet, but uh, we are trying to get her back on the phone. And yes, you're right. We are looking at the time at the moment. Give me one second and I'll give you a thumbs up pretty soon. Thanks, Julian. This is the world we live in, you guys. This Zoom chaos, as it were, um, digital digital nightmares. But you know, I'm sure if we were in person, there would be some sort of tech issue as well. Coming from tech company, we face those kind of challenges all the time. It works great until it doesn't. And so, um, thanks so much again for staying with us, for tuning in. I see more people are even joining now, which is super exciting. So we're getting into a point where we're going to transition into some breakout rooms here. Talk about. Um, not only the exciting news of Bitwise coming to Toledo as our official first city outside of California, um, but also our other cities that we're located in. So Fresno, Merced, Bakersfield, Oakland. If you're interested in learning more about any of those cities and the work that we're doing and kind of the progress of Bitwise, there's going to be some really great conversations happening in each of those locations with significant folks from each of those cities and a Bitwise team member who's leading those efforts. Um, so just hang out with us here and we'll get those breakout rooms sorted out in just a minute, uh, figuring out if we're gonna be able to say uh, goodbye to Ruth here or if we're just gonna keep, keep chilling and moving on to the next thing. So I am your sideshow entertainment for the moment. My name is Chanel Charest. I am the Chief Operating Officer for Bitwise Industries. Um, and I originally was hired as the evangelist. So I am here to be excited about Bitwise. I've been excited since I started and before, and I'm really thankful that we get to expand this effort. I got a thumbs up from Julian. He's our tech guy. So that is really, really exciting. Um, and so I think that what I'm looking at here is we're not even gonna try to pan over to the other conversation. We're just gonna go straight to breakout rooms. Julian, is that right? Okay, great. So what you're gonna see is at the bottom right-hand corner, if you're not familiar with Zoom, there's a breakout room option there. You can actually select the room that you wanna jump into. Um, you can hover over, I think it's the blue number Can you hear me, Tasha? Yes, we're, okay. in, in, we're in the Toledo breakout room now. Um, it looks like uh, folks are all over here. We have several people here, so that's great. Um, we're gonna go ahead, I think, and get started since we're a couple minutes behind. Um, we appreciate everyone's patience, the entry into the breakout room. Um, what we're uh, here to do today, we're doing a virtual uh, press conference that uh, involves ProMedica, of course, and as you probably saw upon entering in, uh, to do that, I am just going to keep making
Hi, I believe we're back in the Toledo room. Is that correct? Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Um, so we're going to uh, be doing a press announcement uh, for uh, that involves both ProMedica and Bitwise Industries, as, as you saw coming in. So thank you again for the, the patience with the, the technology here. We appreciate that from uh, everyone. Um, we are going to, uh, I know some information has been going around about this, maybe a, a couple stories got out a little earlier this morning, uh, but we are going to get a little bit more in depth uh, in terms of uh, what the partnership means for Toledo. And uh, first up, we're going to have uh, President and CEO at ProMedica, Randy Ostra, um, give us more information about the announcement and share that. Then we're going to run through uh, some other speakers. And at the end, we're going to have a Q&A for media. And uh, we'll, I'll read those questions and we'll have our panel respond to those. So if we could have uh, Randy go ahead and get started, that would be great. Yeah, great. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thanks for joining us. You know, we're uh, here today for a, a really special announcement. I think you've got a little preview of that already. And it's an announcement that I think uh, hits on a number of areas. Um, you know, the work that we've done in the social determinants of health, a lot of our community discussions about, you know, providing jobs and uh, economic development. And then again, just, um, you know, the type of jobs we're talking about for folks that are typically underrepresented in these areas. So we're really excited. You know, when you look back at the 22nd Century Committee that started about six years ago, and it was really about public-private partnerships. And at the time, we talked a lot about collaboration. We talked about the work that had been done prior to the, the committee and a little bit, you know, just about where we go forward and how we work together. And at that time, there were a number of priority items that we talked about. We talked about commercial development downtown. We talked about things like the convention center. Um, we talked about Ford Industry Square, a lot about the marina district and the waterfront, the four corners. We talked about the arts. We talked about housing. We talked about retail. But we also talked a lot about neighborhoods. And, you know, I think one of the things we talked about was that, yeah, it's great to build shiny buildings downtown. It's great to, to do that. We all love to see that in cities. But the real hard work is really when you think about neighborhood work and how do you improve people's lives. And I think, again, when you think about a lot of things that we've talked about, um, social determinants of health and giving people opportunity. And that starts with education. That starts out with a healthy um, you know, beginning in life. And it goes to things like housing and security and, and a lot, um, you know, uh, transportation and childcare. And it's also, you know, um, when we, we think about what we can do for people, it's about giving them a healthy start in life, giving them um, education and opportunities and give them a job. And so today, um, you know, we're really here to talk about a really exciting opportunity uh, on the job side. And again, when we think about the social determinants from a Prometica perspective, um, you know, when you think about health and well being, 20% uh, of your health is related to health care, and 80% is related to non-health care. And so those other things in health care, including the social determinants of health, are actually more important. So from an from a organizational standpoint, we really look at this as really kind of core to what we do, and it's about providing health and well-being for people. And really, we need to address all these areas. And again, being based here in Toledo and being in 28 different states, and yet we work hard to develop our organization, but yet a lot of the focus is here. It's really, you know, what are the things we can do and, and where can we go? So, you know, it really fits in uh, on a lot of different fronts um, and the type of things that we're uh, wanting to do. And uh, we think it's, you know, incredibly exciting as, as we think about what we want to do and where we want to go. So, you know, what's interesting about it is we think about, you know, kind of the future. And, you know, when we were talking about the 22nd century, we were talking about development projects. We were talking about, you know, how do we establish more tech jobs in Toledo? Um, it's a big priority right now, the state of Ohio. When you look at some of the job needs in our country, you see a lot of things around software development and tech sort of jobs. So you So the bottom right hand corner is where you're going to find that breakout room option. You're going to click on the little blue number um, and then you should be able to join whichever room uh, you'd like to. And if you're having any trouble whatsoever, you can go ahead and raise your hand and one of our tech teams will help get you into the right place. So bear with us. We are having a few, few technical difficulties today. A lot of folks joining, which is super exciting. Um, so we'll get everybody in. I'm going to keep kind of hanging out here until 9.55. So we've got two minutes to kind of keep folks uh
You're still there? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You? Tasha, are you still there? Andy, I can hear you okay, but I think we all moved back to the main room and now we're back in the break. Okay. So yeah. folks can hear us. Great. So if folks can hear us, I'll just uh, uh, keep on going then and uh, apologize again. This is the technology at its greatest. Uh, you know, one of the things, though, that we talked about uh, at the time was, you know, even when uh, we were thinking about economic development, is how do we attract more tech jobs? You know, we've seen a lot of great projects be announced recently, a lot of development projects that are either announced or underway. Same thing on the manufacturing side. Uh, and, you know, I think one of the things that we've hoped for is to be able to attract a lot more tech jobs as well and really give people kind of a, a multiple of opportunities. So if you think about that, you know, think about, well, what would be a perfect world? What, what could we get relative to tech? And I think what we, you know, all say probably the same things. We'd want a, a company that's, you know, really successful, that they have a great track record, um, that they've got a, a really, really good management team, that they've been successful in training and employing uh, people, and that, that that's gone particularly well, that they're interested in tech, in STEM, um, that, you know, they, they would support even for Prometica, some of our initiatives, um, you know, that they would also have a national reputation, that they would be well known, um, that, you know, be really well connected. And then also, I think we would say it wouldn't be great if they could help people that are unrepresented in tech areas and, and maybe sometimes um, not given opportunities. And that they're also, you know, one of these broader companies that are mission focused in really thinking about the social determinants of health. And uh, we are fortunate that we found that company and, um, uh, and a company called Bitwise, and that's what we're here to announce today. Uh, Robin Whitney, who's gonna speak next, actually was on a um, webinar for the College of Engineering, and Irma spoke, and Robin made a connection with her. And now you fast forward maybe six months later, and uh, Toledo will be the first tech location outside of California, as already heard, to really um, create a, um, uh, a tech company that not only trains, but also employs and uh, gets very, very involved in their community, not only from a real estate and development standpoint, but also a social determinant standpoint. So we're um, incredibly excited to be here today. We're incredibly excited to offer, um, to announce the, the partnership um, with Bitwise. And then also begin to talk about the redevelopment of the Jefferson Center. And that's what Robin's going to talk about. So again, I think it's a, a great day for Toledo. Um, you know, I think we see um, hundreds of jobs being created in the next few years. And you're going to hear a little bit more about that. So again, from a Prometica perspective, it aligns with the things that we've talked about before. It aligns with, I think, the path that we've been working on together in our community, the path that we've talked more about investing in neighborhoods and social determinant. And it's about opportunity. And uh, that's what today's announcement uh, is. And so we're, we're glad to be part of it. And uh, as we go along, you will hear other people being partners as well. So with that, thank you for being here today. And with that, Tasha, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Randy. Um, what we'll do next is uh, wanted to see, uh, we were gonna turn it over to uh, Irma Ogwen Jr. at Bitwise Industries. Um, so I'm just checking to see if Irma is in our room. I um, made it. Irma, you made it. Great. Well, thank you so much. Well, we're going to turn it over to you, and then we'll have uh, Robin uh, share some information after you. But uh, if you would like to go ahead and uh, share Bitwise's perspective on this exciting partnership and the news and your plans for expanding to Toledo. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you uh, all so much for being here. I apologize for being a little late. There was traffic. Uh, and uh, no, I'm kidding. There was, you know how these technology things can be. They just don't go as smoothly as you plan for, but um, really appreciate you being patient. We are so excited about today. I, I have a personal connection uh, to uh, my reasons for excitement, which we can get into in a little bit here. Um, but let me just do a little bit of introduction for those of you who weren't, um, had, didn't have a chance to join us for our, our announcement earlier this morning. Um, my name is Irma Olguin. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Bitwise Industries, which is headquartered here uh, in Fresno, California, uh, where today, I'm not sad to say, it will be about 70 degrees. Uh, beautiful and sunny, um, and I can't wait to uh, leave Zoom for a little while and go outside. But first, let me visit with you all, and let me also tell you about this exciting news that we have to share with you. So, 
in 2013, when Jake, my co-founder and I began Bitwise Industries, we wanted to leverage the technology industry to sort of fix our city. Uh, not, I don't know how much you all know about Fresno, California, but it is a challenged place. Um, lots of unemployment, um, homelessness, um, and since the beginning of time, agriculture has been the driving in industry here. And so what that has led to is this sort of gap between the folks who sort of own things and the folks who labor on things. And we believe that the technology industry could help to diversify our city. Um, and we have been at this now for uh, a couple of years, um, going on eight. Um, and when we started to sort of pick up traction and skilling up a new uh, and diverse technology workforce, we realized that we really wanted to share our model with the rest of the world. Um, didn't know exactly what that looked like, wasn't sure what shape that would take, and honestly didn't know how to go about doing it. Um, but what we were able to do in 2019 is we raised the Series A and we said we're going to expand to three additional cities inside of California. Um, those cities were Bakersfield, Merced, and West Oakland. Um, and so being inside of California, it was sort of, you know, moving around to these different places that looked and felt so much like your hometown. And today with our Series B announcement, we're so excited uh, to announce that for the first time we're leaving California and we're going to a place near and dear to my heart. Um, our first expansion city outside of the Golden State will be Toledo, Ohio. If you were all in the same room, I would expect raucous applause. I would expect some, you know, cowbell. I would, you know, we would do, maybe even do streamers. Um, but to talk about this with me today, our sort of foray uh, into Toledo, Ohio, and back for me to the Midwest where I happened to go to school, um, I am super, super pleased to welcome the mayor of Toledo to join me in this conversation to explore and to uncover what we may be able to do together. Well, uh, thank you, <laughs> uh, Irma, for the uh, opportunity to say a word or two. I wasn't expecting it, so you caught me in a rare moment of having my tongue tied. But um, <laughs> just on behalf, the, on behalf of the city of Toledo, I just want to uh, really echo a lot of what Randy said earlier, just about how thrilled we are uh, to have been selected as the first city outside of California uh, that you chose to expand to. And what it means uh, for us uh, is uh, it allows us to build uh, a narrative. Um, you know, we're proud of our, uh, you know, manufacturing DNA. We're proud of our blue collar, roll up your sleeves, uh, you know, let's build an automobile, let's build a you know, uh, a, a Jeep or a transmission, or let's make some glass. We're proud of it. We are proud. We've always known we can, uh, that, that we can use our brawn. This is going to help tell the story that we can also use our brain. And to attract, uh, you know, almost 400 tech jobs um, is, will tell a story that we want to tell about our city. And, um, you know, the, the, whether it's coding or, or uh, developing apps or whatever the case may be, these are folks that, frankly, the economy may have uh, overlooked or left behind in our community. They're going to develop the important skills that they will need to improve themselves, build our economy, and heck, uh, help local businesses who might need someone to do some coding. Um, and if we can do that while uh, redeveloping a gorgeous building in our community, the Jefferson Center, uh, it really is a win-win. So on behalf of the city, um, uh, we're really uh, we're, couldn't be more excited. And uh, it is also the benefit uh, to have a wonderful university like the University of Toledo in our town because, uh, you know, had you not uh, uh, gotten a degree there in computer, maybe sort of computer sciences or in engineering, something about engineering and computers, That's right. uh, you know, that, uh, that helped make a link uh, from our city uh, to where you are now. So uh, we're excited and uh, just happy to be a small part of the team that made this happen. Thank you for that, Mayor. Um, we're, we're really excited. And, and for those who, I didn't mean to bury the lead there. Um, I did attend the University of Toledo 
um, a, a few years ago, we'll leave that math to someone else, uh, and did earn a degree in computer science and engineering. Um, but that's not the only reason, honestly, that we're drawn to Toledo. And I kind of want to dive into that a little, a little bit here. Um, what we found in Toledo, as so as Bitwise began to ask itself if we were going to expand outside of California, there were a number of things that we wanted to find, we were hoping to find, um, and that was a place that felt similar to Fresno in terms of just the heart and the ambition and the scrappiness of that place. And what we found, in addition to all of those things, when we when we really started exploring relationships in Toledo, it is a set of people. Uh, and a set of companies deeply in love with their home. Um, in the way that we are deeply in love with Fresno and the folks in Bakersfield are deeply in love with Bakersfield, all of us, I think, believing that there's a version of ourselves that we haven't yet manifested, that we haven't yet attained um, in a way that, as you said, really respects our beginnings, right? And for us in California, that's the ag industry and Bakersfield, that's the oil industry. And, and for you all, uh, manufacturing and, and, and similar. Tell me about what sort of expanding into the, the technology industry might do for the folks who are al already there in Toledo who love their hometowns. Well, well, it's, you know, anything that uh, will keep and attract people in to our city uh, is, is nothing, is nothing but a win. Uh, there are, um, there is a love of hometown uh, here in Toledo, and there is a, a, a grittiness and a um, a resilience that uh, I think uh, you often find in underdog cities. And I use that phrase because I know that's that a core, as Randy mentioned, a core part of the Bitwise mission um, is to invest in underdog cities and underdog communities. And I think it is true. Uh, that uh, cities like Toledo that have faced adversity over the years uh, have, uh, you know, I think their citizens um, uh, do have a pride and a work ethic and a resilience that maybe you don't see elsewhere. So um, th this will allow, again, folks who, for whatever reason, the economy, um, you know, has, hasn't worked for, uh, uh, you know, maybe th whether it's through you know, globalization or bad trade deals or whatever it is, if you're someone who has, you know, maybe was working at a factory for years and now you find yourself either unemployed or underemployed, but you know you have capacity and talent you want to give back to your community, maybe you didn't have a, uh, you know, a, an avenue to do that before. Now you do. Um, you can learn how to code. You can, you know, you can, uh, you know, in, in involve yourself in a tech uh in the tech economy, in the in the knowledge economy, in a way again that will benefit you, yourself, and your family, but also, heck, you know, any one of God knows how many businesses in this very community need someone to do some coding. <laughs> you know, so you can help yourself, help businesses in your uh, in your town, and if doing so also creates, um, you know, helps push the narrative uh, that we can do tech jobs in Toledo too. Uh, then so much the better because we can, you know, we, we we can do brawn and brain, and we've known that for a long time. But now we're going to have a chance uh, to prove it, and this this could be, um, uh, you know, the first uh, of a number of do dominoes uh, that begin to position Toledo uh, as a city with a with a diverse uh, diversified economy that can do manufacturing, you know, can do the blue collar. Uh, muscle grease under the fingernails types of jobs, but can also work with our brains and and be creative and and uh, you know and and use knowledge. So again, I, I'm not usually this inarticulate, uh, but it, it, it's an indication of frankly uh, our excitement, but also the the potential of what this could build and become. The possibilities really are endless. Completely agree uh, com with everything that you just said, and and you're doing just fine. You're uh, you're eloquent. Uh, if not. Well, at least, I, at least I'm not singing this time. Didn't I uh, was going to bring this up? Yeah. I was just, I was going to. Great, great segue. So, so. Oh no, no, we, we don't need to segue into my singing. But it, <laughs> it was an indication of how hard I we fought uh, to to be, you know, my willing or our willingness to do anything. Even it even came to song, I believe, in one of our early conversations. It did indeed. Was, this is actually something we actually share this uh, uh, this story around our sort of figurative <laughs> campfire. Uh, okay. that 
there were a few of us on a call with the mayor at one point and he um, as part of the the um, sort of welcome uh, be, burst into song and was singing about Toledo and I have to know I mean I have to tell you as silly as it sounds it was such a human moment um, we weren't talking to some uh, you know big city mayor above and different from his people um, we were talking to the people right who just so happens to be the mayor uh, and that among many many other things really has drawn us um, to the folks um, I know Randy Ustra of ProMedica also on this call, extremely warm, extremely well welcoming. Um, Chancellor and uh, President um, at the University of Toledo, extremely warm, extremely welcoming. There's something in the water. There must, there must be. I mean, it's that Midwest sort of warmth and charm um, that we are just so excited about. One of the things that we're so excited about. And I know that there are um, a handful of, of our team on this call sitting over here in California what would you like us to know about you all um, that we may not know being not of that place? Is this, is this still a question for me or is someone else? <laughs> Let, let's have you answer, Mayor, and then uh, uh, Mr. Ustra, if you don't mind, we'll bring you up here in a second. Um, I guess I would say, first of all, looking at the participant list and seeing that there's 130 people here, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't have told the story about me singing, but nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> There is pride in our hometown. We, we, you know, you know, maybe this helps answer your question. Uh, we love our city. We're proud of it, and we are anxious to prove to you and to everyone uh, that we can do this. That we can do this work. You know, I don't, I, I don't necessarily know what folks on the coasts think of those of us in the middle of the country. Uh, there's all sorts of talk about flyover country and this and folks on the coast. So I, I think. Sit, folks in Toledo sometimes have a you know a, a chip on their shoulder in a good way. Um, with we have we are anxious to show everyone that we can do this. That you you know that that um, um, we can work with our hands, but we can work with our minds as well. And we're excited for the opportunity. And frankly, um, you know what do you need from us, or what do you want to see? We want you to to give us the chance to to prove that we can do it. And uh, and. What begins here with uh, Bitwise could well grow into, um, you know, something really exciting, uh, uh, you know, uh, about the story Toledo tells about ourselves. So that's what I would say. Let us let us prove to you that we can do this. And I know that we're up to the task. Now, hopefully someone else can talk. I, I love that. Thank you, Mayor, so much for chiming in. I'd love to uh, maybe turn our attention for a second to uh, Randy Ustra, um, who's been, as I said, a wonderful and welcoming partner as we get to know the Toledo area better. Uh, Mr. Ustra, what are your thoughts? We just announced um, our expansion in Toledo. Um, and I think that I would be re remiss if I didn't say out loud that if not for you and your team, um, uh, we may, maybe we wouldn't have made these decisions yet, right? There, there's still so much left to do, but I really feel like um, in many ways, you and team took us by the hand and said, let us show you the wonderful things that can be in this place and what we're already working on. And PS, this is how Bitwise may be additive to that. Um, can you just talk about what you're thinking and what the dream is there in Toledo and, and maybe just a touch how we might participate in that? Yeah, you know, I think the mayor said, oh, wow, you know, uh, timing is perfect. Things happen for a reason. And uh, you think about aligning your mission and what's going on in our community. You know, when we started today, we talked about kind of the, you know, kind of pivot that Toledo has made over the last decade, kind of building on the work that kind of came before us. And then just the things, you know, I think um, when we have people come to our organization from outside Toledo, they all say the same thing as, A, the people are incredibly nice. They're incredibly competent. They get things done. There's not a lot of bureaucracy. And oh, by the way, you know, you're kind of a gem. And I think that's what we feel about our city. And that's what we feel about this opportunity. You know, what you have done uh, in these cities in California is really what, um, you know, we believe Toledo is perfectly primed for. We've got underrepresented individuals, highly talented. And for whatever reason, the dots have never gotten connected for these individuals. And working together with what you guys have built uh, we can connect dots for a lot of people and then doing that with a social basis, a mission basis. And, you know, um, it's not an 
unreasonable to think of us being a major tech center in the next five years. And not only for what, you know, the skills that you bring, what's here already, um, some of the opportunities and developments that people may not quite know about yet that are gonna get announced over the next year, um, you know, the software development piece that you bring to it. So, so you know, uh, uh, if in uh, five years, people aren't talking about Toledo as one of the uh, uns unsung tech centers in the United States, we'll be surprised. And I think it's all for what we've talked about today in, in you know, the fact of your team. And again, just an incredibly nice team, a competent team with a great track record, a national voice. So, um, you know, the stars are aligned and we think this is the perfect time uh, for you to come to Toledo. And, uh, and, you know, I think as the mayor said, and we're gonna make this work and we're gonna be highly successful because that's what Toledo does. I love that, I love that. And would you, so I know that that you all do just a tremendous amount of work um, in and around and for the community of Toledo specifically. And uh, what would you say to those same folks um, on this day with this announcement, what would you say they should expect from um, us and this partnership together um, in the immediate term? Yeah, you know, I think it's what, you know, when people look at, you know, the, the information about Bitwise and what you stand for, the people that you've included, the folks that are un, underrepresented in tech or excluded from tech and with the opportunities that you have provided, you know, that's kind of been this, this thing we've talked about for the last several years. Our downtown has had a resurgence. We like that. But the neighborhood work in providing jobs and opportunity, getting kids off to a healthy start, getting them in pre-K, getting them in school. And then, oh, by the way, one of the greatest things we can do for people is get them a job, a really good job. And as the mayor said, you know, we, we have a strong manufacturing history, but we also have a lot of, lot of, you know, parts of our community that are in tech. This is actually, I think, just kind of pushes us to another level. So I think the, um, this announcement today and the, the success that you've had, and we believe the partnerships that will evolve from this, it's going to be incredibly successful for the next few years. And um, we're going to find more and more people coming to Toledo, Ohio because of this partnership. I love it. I love it. I believe we also have Robin Whitney. Do we have Robin as well on? Yes. Uh, yes. yes, I am. Yes, good are. afternoon. The, so, it's good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you too. I am uh, delighted to uh, be on the same virtual stage with you. This is, uh, it's, it's quite an honor and it's so exciting after hearing your, um, your talk with um, the Dean of Engineering, Dean Tool, back in August, I was chatting on that talk saying, how do I get a hold of Irma? I want to talk about Toledo. And so it's just kind of exciting to get to this point today. So well, why don't we have that conversation in public right now? <laughs> so I'm super, so the innovation district, downtown, social, social determinants of health. I mean, we could do an entire, you know, several hours on just those topics. Um, but let's start with something a little bit more basic, a little bit more person to person. Um, when a city or a company invites somebody in, you know, presumably from the outside, what are you most nervous about? And how can we, the folks who are tuning in right now, how can we put them at ease that we both believe that we're aligned in, in the goals um, and, and, and the way that we want to include folks in those goals? No, I think it's really, uh, I don't have a whole lot of, um, concerns about it, um, but I do think that the critical um, component is engaging the community. And so uh, we've already done that. Uh, I think that's evidenced by the amount of people that are on this call and we probably could have doubled it, trying to think of uh, you know folks that need to hear about this and we will continue to draw them in because this takes the community to get involved in it. This is, um, it's, it's kind of, it's quite similar to some of the other initiatives that we at ProMedica have done. We don't need to take the credit for things and we don't need to stay in the lead. Uh, in fact, sometimes we just start to ignite it and get it going. And then we need to, we need to bring in all the other folks that need to help make it uh, become a reality. And so, you know, that's really the role that we feel uh, uh, as ProMedica, as an anchor institution, we really wanna do things that um, you know, impact our community in a positive way, even if those things are maybe not traditional for a healthcare system. I, I, wanna, I wanna peel that back an extra layer because um, 
uh, I don't know if you know, but we're running a small company here in California. We talk to all kinds of folks inside of California. We talk to all levels of government. We talk to folks across the nation. What you just said out loud doesn't very often get said out loud, certainly not by a health company. Um, and I want to I want to understand a little bit of that motivation. Why does ProMedica do things this way? What's the sort of driving force and the heart behind it? Well, um, you know, Randy's always best to answer these things. Um, I'll, I'll try my best and he can probably add to that. But, you know, we see ourselves where we are a not-for-profit mission-based organization headquartered here in Toledo. And we feel that it is our obligation to um, think about our community in ways that are beyond the walls of our institution. So it's not really just thinking about the care when somebody shows up at our doorstep or in our hospital or in our, or in our offices. It's what can we do? We're embedded here. We'll be here for a very long time. And what can we do to make a difference? We could, we could as you said, talk for hours about things like social determinants of health, but we have good sound science that shows the linkage between health and health outcomes and some of the social ills that um, you're fully aware of in, in, in your program. So, you know, that's another place where I think we've got such alignment is it's really not, um, it's not just about a training program uh, in tech. It's not just about uh, healthcare. It's how do you think about the whole person and really make sure that we're thinking about all those things in order to make us have a successful outcome. Absolutely. Mr. Ustra, anything to add to that? I feel, uh, I think Robin is exactly right that you probably do in fact have plenty to say on this topic, but what, what are the high notes for folks, uh, for example, on our team or here in California um, that we should know about the work you all are doing and the way that you concentrate it? Yeah, you know, Robin said it well, you know, we've been doing social determinant work for uh, a decade. Um, we started with patients. We're actually screening now employees for social determinant needs and working with other employers. And it's really this idea that health and well-being, um, we have a society that's too hospital centric. Um, health really is, as an individual, um, is really kind of individually based. Um, a lot of folks have various social challenges, um, sometimes not what you would think or who you would think. And, um, you know, if you have social issues in your life and yeah, we can give you an MRI, but that doesn't help if you have food issues or housing issues or a victim of domestic violence. And really, you know, when we think about health and well-being, it's kind of all our responsibility. So it's not only a healthcare organization, that's, you know, we're nonprofits, so we should be doing this work. But it's also just, I think, as individuals, and we think about, you know, the work you're doing with your employees, that's really the things we believe that that's what every employer should do. Um, they should screen for social determinants of health. Uh, we're looking a lot at personal determinants of health, which has gets to life purpose and that importance. And we really think that along with the clinical work we do and investment in neighborhoods, that's really how you make communities healthy. So if all we did was just clinical work, kind of shame on us. So people don't always understand that and they kind of misunderstand what we do, but it's really that motivation. Our board has been very supportive. We've made a lot of investments in that area. And the more we've done that, the more uh, results we've seen, it actually lowers healthcare costs. And so it's the right thing to do. It's just so beautiful. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I don't, um, I can't overstate um, how unlike um, other places or entities uh, you all are um, in our experience. And that's not to say that some of the world doesn't share your point of view, but I'm not sure that we've ever come across any entity um, that is um, really walking the walk in addition to talking to the, the talk. And so um, couldn't be more excited to have you all as partners. Um, and, and it's really just a, it feels like a new day. You know, I feel when I was in Toledo and I was going to school there, it was, it was a struggle. I was uh, uh, there and studying and I didn't know anyone and was from across the country and was working full time in addition to going uh, to school full time. But even still, even though it was, you know, a battle, um, I, I just love the people. Uh, and now fast forward to, you know, I've got a little, a few years of experience under my belt. Uh, I've seen a bit of the world. Um, and, and as Bitwise, we have really ex been exposed to a number of opportunities in terms of our own growth. Where might we fit well next? Again, not as a white knight riding in to save the day with the technology industry, but really intentionally um, 
as a tool to be additive to the things you all are already doing, right? ProMedica, the University of Toledo, the mayor's office, and on and on. What you all are already doing, um, we just want to be the wind at your back. Um, and, and, and I think that there, you know, if we're looking at reading the tea leaves and how are we actually going to accomplish it, um, I think being able to promote the work of partners that we gen genuinely believe in is where it starts. And we, um, when we go to talk about our choice to expand to Toledo, and we, when we go to talk about um, um, the why, it's so easy to lift you all up as examples of the wonderful things that are happening um, in this place that are truly, truly local. And it feels like we can sort of come in uh, and add to that without disrupting uh, the good things that you all have going on. And I hope that that's one of the messages that is being communicated here today to the folks who are listening, um, is that there's a local expression of Bitwise uh, uh, that will represent itself or manifest itself in Toledo. It's not a copy and paste situation for us. We're not looking to just pick up what's been done in Fresno and plop it down in, in Toledo and hope it survives. It's not the way that these things work. It's certainly not how we wanna build community uh, and be with the community in that place. And something that sometimes gets missed uh, is that you are, um, <coughs> you are the bitwise in Toledo in the future. Um, and so what that means to us is that we're not exporting talent from Fresno to Toledo, but we will be hiring on the ground the, the full team uh, to, um, uh, from Toledo of that place to be the Bitwise team in Toledo. And we're super, super excited about that. Um, I just got a little bit of a reminder here from uh, Tausha. Thank you for that. Uh, I do. We do need to move to the Q&A portion. And I, I apologize too, if I did not pronounce your name right, feel free to correct me. Just Oh no, that's okay. Now. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you so much, uh, That was just a great back and forth. I feel like it really helps the people of Toledo to better understand Bitwise. And and uh, and thank you, Mayor, for, for adding some, some commentary there. That's greatly appreciated. Um, Robin, uh, we'd like to introduce Robin Whitney real quick again to uh, have her uh, pull up a couple slides just to give an idea of what this renovated Jefferson Center uh, might uh, look like and, and what the, the vision is for, the, um, for this new innovation center. And so Robin, if you wanna maybe say a couple words uh, on that and then we'll jump into the Q&A. Will do, and hopefully everyone can see the, the slides. And um, Irma, we didn't get a chance really to talk about the impact that you've had on um, some of the other cities um, where you've taken blighted buildings and repurposed them. And that's really our intention here as well. And, and just, so uh, I'll- Just to quickly interject there, Robin, we see your um, folders, but not the deck. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> uh, no thank problem. you. Um, and while you pull that up, maybe I'll just quickly touch. There we yeah. are. How's that? Thank you. Okay. All right. I moved it. I moved it on my screen. That wasn't such a smart <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think that um, this is one of the places, great places where we have found such a synergy in our discussions with Bitwise and what we've been doing at ProMedica because they have at Bitwise taken blighted buildings and repurposed them for uh, these centers of innovation. And that's really the vision for what we want to do in Toledo as well. Uh, with the Jefferson Center, which is the old post office building, the old post office for our downtown. So building is located at Jefferson and 14th. Uh, probably most of the people on the call from Toledo know about this building. Um, but what you may not know is it's been closed for a couple decades. Uh, it is on the National Register for Historic Places. So um, really um, excited to think about um, repurposing this. It was a vocational school for TPS. So now thinking about it from a learning perspective or the training in, this, in the technology industry. Uh, I'll just go through a, a few of these slides quickly because I know we're pressed for time, but here's one of the images that we've put together on the exterior. So really restoring the exterior to its um, original grandeur. Um, the interior has been modified um, through the 1970s and 80s. So uh, our intention would be to try to remove some of those improvements that were done in the 70s and 80s and put a large atrium in the center 
uh, to really open it back up to what it really looked like when it was a post office. Um, the idea behind doing that is you create this very open design. It can, it, these are just images of similar buildings. So this gives you an idea of what we hope to do, create some large gathering places for public meetings or for large presentations, um, but also have, um, you know, smaller breakout areas for, uh, you know, more intimate space for the building occupants, which will be Bitwise, uh, our Prometica Innovations team, Jumpstart's office in Toledo will move into this. So really thinking about this as a center for incubation of, of new businesses. So it's really important to create space that encourages all of that and programs within the building to encourage it. So, you know, spaces that'll promote innovation and promote connection between the folks that are in the building. And so these images really just um, try to capture kind of internally what it's going to look like, um, but exterior, um, you know, kind of keeping with and respecting the history and the historic nature of the building, but creating new um, cutting edge technology advanced space for, uh, for the development. So I think that this is another area, Irma, where we've been, uh, you know, we're kind of in sync on thinking about things. We've been working on uh, this Jefferson Center for a couple of years, trying to think about the right develop redevelopment program. And so we're really excited to think about how to bring this building back into um, use in our community. We're so excited about the Jefferson Center is the the slide that you had at the beginning about great downtowns being the heartbeat of a city. Um, we we buy into that 100%. Um, and this is why we spend so much time in the downtowns of the places that we serve. So the, the partnership here couldn't be more excited. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be vibrant. Um, and we're going to fill it with, uh, with folks of Toledo who love their hometowns. Well, thank, thank you, Robin. And thank, thank you, Irma. We're going to uh, move into the Q&A uh, section. Thank you, everyone who uh, I know uh, we're running a little over and we're going to uh, get through all the media's questions. They have uh, quite a few questions here. And I will pose those uh, to the panelists. And uh, hopefully, we can uh, get through those pretty quickly. So thank you, everyone, uh, for hanging out uh, here. Um, the first question I'd like to pose to the panel um, is how uh, from Sophia at M, uh, NBC 24, and she's asking, how will this partnership directly target and bring those in underserved communities to be part of all of this? Yeah, I'm happy to chime in there. So the way that we typically expose our programs to the, the left out or the underserved um, is that we meet them where they are. Uh, so we will do speaking um, at uh, uh, PTA meetings, um, at rallies, uh, we'll sponsor t-ball games. Uh, we will go to churches um, anywhere that we're able to sort of spread the message where folks currently gather. We want to show up there and expose them to an opportunity that they may not have been invited to before. Um, and so with that, um, what 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 begins as your top of the funnel ultimately ends up as your bottom of the funnel. And what I mean by that is folks who are exposed early become your new resulting technology workforce. And that's the approach that we take every single time. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, Sophia also asked, how will the tech industry help Toledo grow? And, and you know, why, why the technology industry here? Yeah, I'm happy to chime in, but I think there are any number of folks who are qualified on the call to um, uh, chime in as well. Um, the technology industry is the fastest growing industry on the planet. And I think that what we have seen um, with this pandemic is really just an acceleration of that trajectory. Um, and as more and more folks are relying on technology to do their jobs, uh, to um, uh, go to school, um, uh, to communicate with friends and family, um, it is so pervasive in the way that we live these days that there's got to be a technology workforce that powers all of that. Um, and so if we can be an actor in producing that talent, that will encourage not just the, the lifestyles of the folks around you, but those high growth, high wage jobs buy homes, uh, those, they pay taxes, uh, that paves roads, that buys sandwiches, and really does sort of spread the prosperity around uh, in places like Toledo and other underdog cities. I, might, oh, I just might quickly say, if I can add to that, that 
uh, from an economic development standpoint, every tech job that your economy adds creates four additional jobs. So there, there's, it's a four to one multiplier effect. Uh, the power of tech jobs in particular to create uh, four times as many non-tech jobs for everyone you bring in. It's that, that's why it's so important. The other part from the state standpoint, um, you know, I think the state of Ohio has indicated that you know, we need to do more tech in the state of Ohio. It's critical that we do a better job across the state. And so this, you know, kind of goes right to the goals the state has and a belief that Ohio could do more and should be doing more. So, you know, again, economic development wise, but also just because there's so much great need out there that if we're going to compete in generations to come, we have to be good at tech. The only other thing I was going to add was, you know, as the mayor brought up the manufacturing sector, which is so strong in this area, what's happening in manufacturing is tech, you know, advanced manufacturing, robot, robotics, automation, all of those things are a huge part of the manufacturing environment and all of all of that needs kind of that tech uh, ecosystem to support it. Thank you. And uh, Amy uh, Steigerwall from WTOL is, is asking, you know, how, how soon do we anticipate this really getting up and running? And, and what types of jobs, you know, or training will be available specifically? I know we've kind of said, you know, tech jobs, but um, can we maybe uh, delve into that just a little bit more? Happy to, absolutely. So the work begins immediately. Uh, and in fact, these conversations have, have um, preceded this conversation for many months. Um, and so we're ready to hit the ground running. Uh, we do believe that there will be an interim step for us between um, the Jefferson uh, and uh, post pandemic. So sometime between the end of the pandemic, uh, shelter in place orders and what have you, and the time that the Jefferson um, is open and ready for business, there's probably something in the middle there for us where we can sort of see boots on the ground. Even without a physical spot to, to begin in, we are um, going to be rolling out our programs, our technology classes. We're going to start building software in that place. We're already hiring in Toledo. Um, and so it has not, we're not slowing down at all, um, even with a pandemic happening. Um, in, in terms of, so when you can start to sort of see the fruits of that labor, I would say weeks, not months, uh, and you'll, be, be, you'll begin to see some of the things that we're able to do uh, in that place. Now, uh, in terms of the jobs, the types of jobs that we'll be bringing uh, and that we'll start collecting in Toledo, we focus pretty heavily on web application development, but then do a ton of job, uh, work outside and sort of technology adjacent uh, work. So you can think of things like uh, programming jobs, uh, UI, UX design, online marketing or digital marketing, uh, uh, database development, uh, project management, uh, and on and on. And then to uh, the mayor's really, really good point. For every technology job you create, it's 4.3 additional jobs in local goods jobs that are also created. Uh, so that halo effect is massive. While we might hire, you know, 100 people between now and the first 30 months, uh, which is our plan, um, those have a multiplicative effect, effect on the local economy as those additional jobs are also created. Okay. Um, Robin, does Robin want to talk a bit about the timing for the Jefferson Center as well, just so people know the timing for that? Absolutely. Yeah, I can. Yes, we're planning to get the, the uh, design completed this year and begin construction very late this year, late 2021. So maybe November, December. The project will take about a year. So we think end of 2022, early 2023 for completion and occupancy. And, uh, but Bitwise will be coming sooner, correct? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Got it. Okay. And uh, we, we also have another uh, question from the media. Uh, again, uh, for you, Irma, uh, probably, uh, what lessons um, has Bitwise learned from your other projects in California that you feel could um, help make to the Toledo location a success? I know you said it's sort of different uh, based on each community, but uh, how will you take those, what lessons learned will you take? You know, I think maybe the biggest thing, and it's just like, um, overwhelmingly loud in business in general is that you don't know everything um, and that there are folks who are going to help you um, uh, accomplish the things that you want to accomplish who are mission aligned and in that I think the biggest lesson that we've learned from expansion is that it really is the local folks it's going to be the Toledoans who create Bitwise um, and they're going to take what we've got if you think of it as a starter pack and customize it to meet the moment 
in that place. I'll give you just one very small, simple example. Um, uh, in, in Fresno, California, we are a place that has suffered uh, greatly from urban sprawl, which means that transportation, especially mass, mass transit, is complicated. Uh, there isn't a bus. Literally, one doesn't exist that reaches from the edges of the county into the heart of the city center. And so transportation for us is a front and center problem, unlikely to be the exact same front and center problem in a place like Toledo. And who's going to know that better? Who's going to really know what the challenges are of that place that we need to spend time on and resources on to address other than Toledoans? Um, and so really relying on um, and giving sort of the empowerment to the boots on the ground, the folks who love their hometown, um, to really make uh, uh, bitwise what it needs to be in that place that answers Toledo's very specific questions. Okay, well, thank you. That sounds great. And so is there a, a timeline for an approximate grand opening date? I think the grand opening for the Jefferson Center would be in early 20. on the tech side. So great job and just here with gratitude and appreciation. Well, we're delighted to have you. And I think there are two sides of the conversation here. And I know one of the things I appreciate most is we talk about, we're gonna have this big announcement. You say, well, can we have a conversation? Um, and two critical things that you've championed even just in those remarks there are this notion of we need, we need capital, we need venture capital to start investing in places that are off the coast, in your Fresno, in your San Bernardino, in your Bakersfield. Um, and Mitch and Frida have certainly been leaders in exactly that today, joined by Motley Fool Ventures and uh, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. And then on the other side of that coin, the substance behind that work, on your screen, you have Jen Lewis and adorable Jasmine, uh, two Bitwise apprentices. Um, uh, and it, it, that is the outcome we're after. Uh, reaching the immense talent that these two folks represent um, is why we do the work that we do. And so I want to uh, give you an opportunity to explore a little bit of their journeys with them. And uh, I'm uh, excited for you all to have the chance to visit here. I love it. Adorable. I want to start with you because I, look, you, I mean, the journey and homelessness and issues in the East Bay, but connected tissue to Central Valley and your experience, you bring that back into uh, Oakland. Tell us a little bit about your background, your journey. How'd you connect with Bitwise in the first place? And why did you even think that this was something that would work for you? And could you ever imagine being here now, being able to share that experience uh, and make it real for so many others? Thank you for that, Gavin O'Newsome and everyone here today. Um, I'm in Oakland, California right now, and I'm connected to um, so many of you, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to share my story. I, um, I actually couldn't have imagined myself actually breaking into tech, if you were honestly to ask me that about two years ago. I was in a place of trying to pivot my career up until that point, I had spent 12 years of my journey, uh, mostly at nonprofits. I was doing social change. Uh, in, in many ways, I think some of us are experiencing like um, uh, a little hesitation or anxiety around what it looks like to go back in a safe manner. Um, and so we wanna make sure that we do that responsibly. I don't, I think that we will do a number of events. We're very, very community oriented and so we, um, in all of the places, uh, do a ton of free event events to uh, invite the local community to be a part of what Bitwise does. Even if you are not connected to the technology industry, this is extremely important. You do not have to be a coder to be welcome in our spaces. Um, and we wanna make sure that that's loud and clear. But in terms of a grand opening, uh, my hunch is that we're gonna wait uh, to celebrate with the wonderful folks at Prometica uh, to really sort of do it big uh, when it comes time to open up the Jefferson. Um, but we'll do some miniature celebrations along the way to make sure that folks know we're there, that they're welcome, uh, and that we're excited to, you know, do the work. Well, we are all very excited and, you know, thank you, Irma, and, and, and uh, thank you, Randy and Robin, for everyone for sharing uh, in this exciting announcement. Uh, thank you for everyone who hung in there. Um, again, we apologize for the technical difficulties and, uh, and uh, hopefully you will have gotten some great news here. We're happy to uh, answer any additional questions. 
uh, if folks want to uh, e email the email address that was provided um, or reach out to me personally at ProMedica, happy to get answers for you as well. Um, we think this is great news for our community and we appreciate uh, everyone tuning in for it. So uh, more to come for sure. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure Thank joining, you, everyone. joining you all. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. the table and um, help to build the future that we want to see. And so I found out about Bitwise via listening to Arlen Hamilton's um, 